All right, let's talk supplies. Now, my supply philosophy is use what you have. You know, we all want more than we have and, and so forth, but I don't want a lack of supplies to keep you from, from getting creative. You don't even have to buy this particular sketchbook. I am going to show you all my favorite supplies and my favorite sketchbooks, but just know that you can literally grab a notebook or um, I've seen people go to a Goodwill and get a book, like an old dictionary. And, um, you know, well, dictionary papers are thin, but something with thicker paper, jessel them and use that as a sketchbook. So I don't want um, a lack of the supplies to get in your way, but I am gonna show you some of my favorites, some of my go-tos. Um, my Posca collection is, uh, this is how, so this is how I get this. This is a big collection, it's taken me a long time. But what I do is I say, okay, you know, it's about, one of these is about the price of a fancy Starbucks coffee. And so, you know, whenever my husband and I are out about and, you know, he stops for a coffee, I just don't have one because I, you know, I would much rather have a Posca pen. And so I just think it's kind of funny. Those are lots of cups of coffee in there. And the coffee's gone in like 10, 15 minutes. Are you kidding me? No comparison. Okay, anyway. So let's talk about some of my favorite supplies. But again, use what you have. Any acrylics work, any gouache, watercolor, acro gouache, ink pens, markers. You could borrow your kids' crayons and pens and start a sketchbook, okay? So do not think that you have to go out and buy all these things. I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna list them in case you're interested in any of them, but please hear that it's about what you have and not using necessarily this, okay? Let's look at supplies. Anything goes for supplies. You can use your kids' crayons, whatever paints you have of any kind. Um, you'll learn no matter what. So this is just, um, I'll show you some of the fun things I have that, uh, that I've gotten to use pretty heavily. Uh, but again, use what you have. So these are the woody three-in-ones. I can't think they come in like 16 colors and I can't remember why they're called three-in-ones except that they are water soluble and also, um, Kind of creamy, not like an oil pastel, which is not water soluble, but they have a really nice, uh, thick kind of texture to them and a creaminess that, and vibrance, vibrancy in the color. So let me show you. We have a quick demo. These bright colors are great to paint over or have, you can rub them, you can paint over and then scratch the paint off and they'll show underneath, or you can do these on top of paints. Uh, these are probably the best thing for going on top of things in, in the sense that they don't, I've never had them not um, show up, even if I've got layers of, you know, oil pastels and acrylic paint and kind of no matter what I've got going on, though, they will still sit there on top for me. So very reliable. These are the new color twos. They are water soluble. So as well, um, much more so than those, I think. You know, you can add a little water to them and they blend pretty quickly in really bright colors. So if you've taken some of my other classes where I do more with this, with these, I, um, I do, I, it's my abstract garden class where I do a lot of background in this and then come through with white like this. And like, this is just what I'm using, but, and it kind of blends and makes another color. So those are just really vibrant, really fun. And, and the these guys will do the same thing. Let me get a better brush. They're just a little bit more, um, okay, waxy, I guess. See how the woody stayed? You can still see the crayon marks, which is kind of cool. So it just depends on what you want. Whereas here, the crayon marks are completely gone. So many fun tools to do so many different things with. Um, I use a lot of gouache, acro gouache and regular gouache. Acro gouache just means that once you paint it there and it dries, it's done. You're not gonna reconstitute it with water. Um, whereas gouache, like this, once we paint it and it dries, we can reconstitute it with water. I'll come back and show you both of those. We'll let them dry. I also use acrylic paints of various kinds. I have some Nova colors, which I learned about from Betty Krause. I have, you know, golden, 
I also have like some cheapies that you can get, you know, like at the art. This is like a from Michaels. I use these for background sometimes when I'm painting a whole background. And I just pick up stuff, you know, if I see something that looks interesting, like this was a, uh, these are Sennelier abstra or, um, acrylic. And I have some Sennelier watercolors, which were really good. So I thought I'd try this. And this is, you know, basically allows you to make like a 3D thing, which is kind of cool. Maybe we should try that at one of my spreads. Um, I just got those recently. I also have these guys. These are the New Pastels Prismacolor. And they're powdery. Well, not as powdery as some pastels, but they're definitely powdery. See that? You can rub it and then there's powder there. They're really for, for me, I tend to use them on, on the top layers of abstracts or flowers because you know, otherwise it pretty much gets buried and covered because it's soft. So I might use it around the flower to highlight or to add a pop of color or to add, um, you know, like in something like this. Here, I want to get this wet. You could do, so let's say I wanted to bring in this color here. You could do something like this. You just have to, you know, it's gonna, the, the color is really intense, which is beautiful, but it's gonna spread, which I don't care to over here until I spray it. Yeah, something like that. All right, and so I talked about the gouache. So I, I like two main brands of gouache. The Holbein, which, you know, for a while I had to look at, where does it even say Holbein? But it's acrylic gouache. Down here is the Holbein, because I have Holbein watercolors. And then the Turner. And these are both acrylic gouache, but I also use the Turner Design gouache, which is not the acrylic. So now that these have dried, remember this was the acryl gouache, this one. So if I try to get it wet, assuming it's completely dry, yeah, I can't, I, well, I guess it's not completely dry. I can get it to come back to life, but I won't once it's completely dry. Whether well, there's this, this is the gouache, I can literally pick it right back up and keep painting. And so it just depends on what you're doing. The gouache, if you wanna be able to come back in later and do something and you want it to respond to water, then that's what you wanna use if you want permanent, like a background that you don't want to disturb, then you would use acrylic or aqua gouache. Brushes. Okay, so it just depends on what I'm doing. For the abstract, look at this messed up brush. For the abstract scrubbing, I use something like this, like the paint's all peeled off it. You know, it's a mess, but it was perfect for scrubbing. For my um, florals and where I want to be able to have, you know, to be able to do shapes and things, this is still not a fancy brush. Creative Mark, I just got it at uh, Jerry's Adorama, but my favorites are Princeton Velvet Touch for that kind of work. They have such a nice point on them. And sizes just varies. We're using, we're using sketchbooks, so I mean, I'm not using, uh, unless I'm doing a background, I'm not using a big brush, although that's a really good exercise to take a large brush, larger than you're comfortable using. I'm working on that now too, because I tend to use smaller brushes and trying to paint something with a big old brush, even in a little sketchbook. I think that'd be good for us. Basically, the sketchbook is a place to try anything and everything. The oil pastels are, just like they sound, oily, really intense color. You can leave it like that, or you can rub it in. They can go underneath, over, in between layers, whatever you want. These are really old and they still work fine. Um, then there's a whole host of different types of pencils, and gosh, they they behave very similarly. Like this is these are the with the great tips, the Stabilo, Carb Othello, and so they are water. So they sound. I don't know if you can hear that, pastelli, even rub on pastelli, and 
they can blend with water, but not as well as some of these other things. But you can end up seeing that texture underneath, which is kind of cool. It didn't, it didn't pick up a lot, the water didn't pick up a lot of pigment. Then there are these super color, too soft, Caron de Dosh, the Switzerland. <laughs> I'm sure I'm saying it wrong. And those are kind of fun to use, like I just did on a wet piece of paper or on dry and then taking some water and dissolving them. So where that can be kind of fun is with leaves. And you can do that with, okay, you know what we're gonna do? We're just gonna do it because I have an idea. I'm gonna show you the various ways in the sketchbook that you can make leaves with some of these watercolor, you know, you're getting a sneak peek, or water-soluble things. All right, let's show what we can do with something like this. Just a quick demonstration. And this is my um, Moleskin art journal, so not the watercolor paper. And you can see I'm gonna use water. It's gonna be fine. And then these are the Tombow markers. They're basically watercolor markers. And what you can do, which is fun, is put a couple different colors in there. And then when you put your wet brush on them, they'll blend. So let's do that here. So now we take a brush, put a little water on it, and you can just kind of paint over what you just created. So this can be, you know, just a sketch if you want to do one like this with nothing much else on the background, or you can paint something else around it, um, or you can, you can do this on top of something else as long as what you've done is acrylic or acrylic gouache or you sprayed it with a fixative because otherwise the water will blend with whatever you just did. But see that? You can just, the Tombows blend more. The pencils leave a little bit of penciling mark, but you can do this kind of thing with the Neo colors as well. And the more you scrub it, you know, with your brush, the more the pigment will pick up and move around. So just all kinds of things to experiment with. Various pencils, pens, markers, anything that makes a color or a line is game. I happen to love this navy um, micron. So, you know, I'll do a lot of detail with the micron pen and different compositions. Just, you can even take one pen, one color, and speaking of pens, let's talk about the Posca collection. So these are the paint pens that I use on top of, so for example, I used them here on these pink. I used the gray one here. This is my fat white one, this guy. Um, I just use, like, you can see I use the teal one. They're on the flowers and the gold. The gold marker I like um, is the Craft Smart. It's a cheapie, but it has a really nice gold texture, to, gold color to it. Here it is. It's the most metallic, kind of rich gold marker that I've found, much more so than the Posca. But, you know, I can use Posca for doing something like, even though this has all kinds of stuff on it, this has acrylic, it's been scribbled, it has oil pastels, it has gouache, aqua gouache, but I can still come in here with Posca if I want and do, you know, something like this right on top of everything. And it works just fine. Um, the worst that can happen is that you get a really gross page and so you just paint over it. 
it's not bad, right? Um, the only thing I've seen supplies wise that doesn't work too well is trying to, like this is done with the oil, water soluble oils, so it's kind of creamy. And then trying to do say pencil, well that pencil's working, but some pencils won't, or pens won't go on top of the, of the oil very well. Like watch, it's gonna work now, see? working but you can see it's not really adhering and then I'm glad it's working for you but sometimes it won't so anyway have fun experiment play pretend you're five years old